Hi, Kevin here. Today I wanted to show you one way to make pound cake pedophores, and I will be using a frozen store-bought pound cake. Here's the pound cake. Now, I think this same company makes a vegan gluten-free pound cake. So the first step is to cut the cake into quarter inch slices. And I'm going to cut this up and then I'll come right back. All right, when you cut the cake, be sure to slice straight down rather than at a slant. And you will need 18 slices for this recipe, which I have right here. And if you have any extra, you can eat them or you can freeze them. And then I'm going to remove six of these slices and set them aside for just a moment. Alright, we're going to be spreading these slices with two different kinds of jam. Actually, the first one isn't a jam at all. It's apricot preserves. The other one is a jam, seedless red raspberry jam. What you want to do is measure out a half cup of the apricot preserves and a quarter cup of the seedless raspberry jam. And then we have to heat these in the microwave just until they start to bubble. I'm going to do that right now and then I'll come right back. Okay, I have the apricot preserves in the microwave just until they started to boil. Now, apricot preserves have peels and we don't want the peels. So you have to strain the preserves. Just pour them into a wire mesh sieve, set over a bowl, and then press down with the back of a spoon. This way the peels will stay in the sieve and all the good stuff will flow into the bowl. Okay, I think that's enough. And of course, you can eat the peels from the preserves. They're delicious. We just don't want them in our petty fours. All right, we're good here. Okay, now, let me move this so you can see. Okay, I'm going to top six of the slices with the apricot. So first, just put a dollop of the preserves on the slices. and then spread it out with the back of the spoon. You don't have to be too tidy here because we will be cutting out these slices. Add a little more over here. Yeah, we will be cutting out little rounds from these slices. I'm going to spoon and spread the raspberry jam on the other six slices and then I'll come back. Okay, now I'm going to place the, um, hmm, which way do I want to do this? I think I'm going to put the apricotted slices on top of the raspberry slices. What we're doing is making these little layered sandwiches. And that's my cat, Tiger, crying out for pettifores. Right. Then, take the six slices that you reserved and put those on top of the apricotted slices. This is actually fun work. Well, I can think of worse jobs, that's for sure. OK. 
Okay. Now hold on, I have to grab a baking sheet and I'll come right back. Yeah, you want to transfer the sandwiches to a parchment or wax paper lined baking sheet and then cover them with cling film. And then weigh them down with something. I'm going to use this casserole dish. And then pop this into the refrigerator for 30 minutes or even overnight. Okay, the little sandwiches have chilled. So now it's time to cut out the rounds. And I'm going to use a one and a quarter inch cutter. It's a biscuit cutter. And I'm going to cut out two rounds per sandwich. You want to avoid the crusts. And then just push the petit four through. Look at this. It's beautiful. I can get it out. There. Very colorful. And I'm transferring the petty fours to a wire rack. I'll cut out one more. Push it through. Here it is. Okay, and then I'm going to finish cutting out the rounds and uh, I'll report back in just a moment. And here they are, 12 petty fours. Yes, Tiger. Sorry about my cat. She's very chatty. So I'm going to set these aside for a moment so I can talk to you about the scraps. Don't throw these out. You can eat them as is. Uh, they might make a nice after school snack for your child or grandchild. Um, or you could tear them up and put them in a dessert goblet and then top them with a whipped cream. Or you could put them in the freezer and save them for the next time you are making a trifle. Okay, now, back to the pedicures. So you could serve these as is, but I think they look rather naked. So I'm going to glaze them with white chocolate. We're going to make that chocolate right now. Okay, so what I have here is a saucepan that contains one inch of water. And I'm heating the water uh, just until it's hot. I don't want it to simmer, let alone boil. So I'm going to turn the flame way down and then put a heat proof bowl over the saucepan and then add white chocolate. This is eight ounces of good quality white chocolate that I just chopped up. Throw that into the bowl. Now, I'm going to add some butter to this. Let me get all of that chocolate in here. So this is six tablespoons of diced, unsalted butter at room temperature. Throw that in. piece over here. Now, let me talk to you about white chocolate. It can be really um, fussy. I've melted 
white chocolate and butter together in the past and sometimes it melts perfectly other times it curdles or it can separate uh, so you have to be very careful about the temperature of the water beneath this bowl again it should just be very hot but not even simmering and then as anti too thick insurance I'm going to add one tablespoon of vegetable shortening and you don't have to do this if yours is too thick you can where's my spoon if your chocolate sauce becomes too thick you can thin it out by adding oh, another tablespoon of butter Okay, and then I'm going to let this melt very slowly, just stirring it from time to time. And when it gets completely melted, I'll come back. Oh, and I wanted to show you the chocolate I'm using. So this is Ghirardelli Premium Baking White Chocolate. And the second ingredient is cocoa butter. And that's what you want. So I have, these are uh, chocolate, white chocolate bars, and they are four ounces each, so you want two bars. You can also use good quality white chocolate chips. What you don't want to use, because I made this mistake one time, is really cheap white baking chips. Th this particular brand doesn't contain any cocoa butter whatsoever and it doesn't melt properly all right the sauce is looking very nice and it's not at all grainy and I think that's what the um, shortening does I don't think it's anti thickening insurance I think it's anti grainy insurance in other words, it's how it helps the sauce to be really smooth. Okay, now I need to quickly bring this over to my petit fours because I want to cover them while this glaze is still quite hot. All right, so now just spoon the glaze over the petit fours. Let it run down the sides. And I'm not going to worry about you know, completely coating the sides. I really just want the sauce to, you know, run down. And if this sauce thickens up on you, just put it over the uh, saucepan of hot water again and just stir it a few times. Now this looks really nice. I hope you can see all right. Very chic. Okay, I think we are looking very good. Let me show you. Zoom out a little. So here they are. And you see it just ran down the sides. I didn't bother to coat them completely. Okay, now I'm going to let this set up and then I'm going to make some royal icing and pipe some little decorations on top. But first, I'm going to put these in the refrigerator and uh, let the chocolate firm up. Hi, I'm back. I wanted to tell you that it's already seven o'clock in the evening and I think my kitchen will be too dark for, well, to continue recording. So what I'm going to do is pop the pettifores into the refrigerator and I did cover them loosely with cling film and then we will continue with the royal icing tomorrow. See you then. Sweet dreams. Okay, it's the next day and I'm getting ready to make some royal icing so that I can decorate these pound cake pettifores. 
So what I have here is the egg white from one large beaten egg, and the egg white is at room temperature. And to the egg white, I'm going to add just a tiny pinch of cream of tartar. Cream of tartar is an acid that helps to stabilize the egg white. You could use lemon juice if you prefer, or you could do it without adding any acid at all. I just think the acid helps a little bit. And then you want to whisk the egg white just until it turns foamy. All right, we're foamy. Okay, then I'm going to add one and a half cups of confectioner's sugar, and I did sift the sugar. See if it will come out of the bowl. It's very humid here. So I think the sugar is sticking to my bowl. Okay. And then I have some water over here just in case I need it. You just stir the egg white and the confectioner's sugar together. What I'm aiming for is a consistency that is neither too thick nor too thin because I will be piping the decorations onto the petit fours. Looks like I might have to add just a tiny, very tiny amount of water. Just a few droplets. Okay, I think this is working all right. Yeah, I once made royal icing and I added too much water to it. And I went to, when I went to pipe it onto the cookies or cake, whatever I was uh, decorating, the stuff just flowed like water out of the uh, piping bag. So you don't want this to be too thin. fingers. Then I want to add some color to this. I'm going to add the classic blue. It's a gel food coloring. Just a drop. See how that does. Oh, it's turning blue. streaks of blue. And I do. Okay. Now we're good. So let me fetch the piping bag. Okay. This is one of those disposable type piping bags. I'm going to transfer the royal icing into the bag. This isn't too thick. No, I think it will be fine. The sound you just heard is uh, is my computer. It makes the makes that little ringing sound whenever someone posts a comment on my YouTube channel. And boy, do I love to read comments. 
So if you ever feel like commenting, please do. I do read all of the comments. Sorry, I'm using my finger here. the icing towards the tip of the bag. Just twist the top, push this down, and then and my scissors. Here they are. I'm going to cut off a very small piece of the tip. And hopefully I didn't cut off too much because I don't want a really large opening. Okay, yeah, I could do this on a plate first so you can just, you can tell how the royal icing is going to come out of the piping bag. Okay, I think we have it. Some dots. up a little bit. Okay, that's not, that was going well and now here it comes. Might look like a four-year-old decorated these petty fours, but I don't care. Okay, let me try doing a spiral. Sort of a spiral. Okay, I'm going to finish decorating these and then I'll come back. Well, you can probably tell that I am not a professional cake decorator. Nevertheless, I wanted to show you the decorations I made. And I should mention that royal icing uh, dries very quickly and it turns glossy. It's nice stuff. Okay, so I have, I don't know what this is. Here are some dots. Here's a zigzag thing. Here's an O. More dots. Here's a K for Kevin an L for Lee, and a J for Jacobs. All right, it's almost four o'clock, so I'm going to prepare my tea tray, and then we can go into the music room and sample some of these petty fours. Some tea. This is Earl Grey tea. I think it will be very nice with the petty fours. Now, for taste, I just wanted to show you the interior again. Very colorful. It's exquisite. The pound cake, which again was store-bought, is not too sweet, but it's very moist. The chocolate coating, the white chocolate coating, has firmed up, and the royal icing is delicious too, and it did turn very glossy. I love them. I need a sip of tea. Well, I hope you will give these pound cake pedophores a try someday. They're not difficult to do. You can make them in stages and you can freeze them. So thank you so much for watching. 
the printable recipe is over on my website, so I will put a link to the website in the description box below. And again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye for now.